thanks uh, very much for coming. It's my fifth visit since October the 7th. What's the purpose? Let's try to find a way forward to make sure that after October the 7th, Hamas is destroyed forever, not temporarily, and that Israel survives and thrives, and the region becomes stronger and more integrated. I believe that the attacks of October the 7th were designed in part to stop the efforts by Saudi Arabia and Israel to normalize, building on the Abraham Accords. The biggest change that I can envision for the region would be the end of Arab-Israeli conflict. How do you do that? If Saudi Arabia and Israel would have diplomatic relations and have economic relations and have a normal relation. That is a nightmare for Iran. October the 7th, attacks not only are horrific in their brutality, they were designed, in my view, to make sure that chaos reigns in the Mideast, because without chaos, Iran is in a world of hurt. What have I found on this visit? I am disappointed that the weapons delivery is being slow. I thought we'd gotten beyond that. My engagement with the Israelis have convinced me that there are vital weapons still slow to come at a time of great need. So I would urge the administration to speed up the delivery of weapons. Israel needs to win a war it can't afford to lose. I was astonished to hear that's still a problem, but it is. Uh, what else have I learned? I've learned that the ICC actions against the state of Israel are not only outrageous, they're jeopardizing the future of stability in the region. Labeling the state of Israel, its prime minister and defense minister as war criminals, makes peace harder to achieve, it's unfounded, and it's one of the great outrages against the Jewish people in the history of the Jewish people, and that's saying a lot. Our friends in Israel are many things, they're not war criminals. There is no policy in place to starve the Palestinian people. That is an outrage unsupported by the facts. The ICC investigation uh, reached a conclusion without even talking to the state of Israel. I, along with seven other Democrat and Republican senators, <coughs> urged the ICC to come to Israel and discuss the concerns you have and the allegations with the legal uh, establishment of the state of Israel to get their side of the story. It's called complementarity. Under the Rome statute, the ICC cannot invoke jurisdiction unless there's bad faith on behalf of the country in question or they show no willingness to resolve the dispute. Israel has one of the most robust independent legal systems on the planet. So when the meeting was canceled by the ICC, scheduled for May 20th, it told, me, it told me everything I need to know about the ICC. How did Israel find out that its prime minister and defense minister were going to be arrested? An arrest warrant would be sought by the ICC on television, watching a CNN interview. The foreign minister's office called the ICC representative wanting to know, did you make it on the plane? We're going to be there to pick you up. They were told we canceled the visit. They saw on television for the first time ever an announcement by the International Criminal Court of arrest warrants would be issued. This without consulting the state of Israel. So I have consulted the state of Israel. I've seen with my own eyes and heard from everybody in this country, left, right, middle, it's not the policy of the Jewish state to starve people. You're in a war for your very existence. Hamas is the bad guy, not Israel. Israel sent literally thousands of tons of food. Israel is providing more water to Gaza now than before the war. Before the war, it was 7% of the water came from the state of Israel. It's now over 40%. So the facts do not bear out that there's an intentional policy of the Israeli government to starve the Palestinian people. I reject that. There is no evidence, in my opinion, of efforts by the IDF to willfully kill innocent Palestinians. That's one of the charges, murder. Your military, I would say like ours, is not perfect but I have a reverence for the IDF. It's earned my respect over time.
It is an ethical, moral-based fighting force. Let me just say that. The, say this, the military capability of Israel to kill Palestinians that they wanted to is unlimited. The people who have died in Palestine as a result of the mil these military operations have been put at risk by Hamas, making it virtually impossible for the Israeli military to destroy the terrorist network that attacked the state of Israel on October 7th without killing innocent Palestinians. It is the goal of Hamas to make you kill Palestinians in trying to defend the Jewish state. The charge against the state of Israel, a willful killing of civilians, is slanderous. It is blood libel. I've been a military lawyer most of my adult life. I'm very familiar with the laws of war. Every law on the books, Hamas has violated. They take mosques and turn them into weapons depots. They shoot rockets from schools and apartment buildings, expecting Israel to retaliate. So the two charges brought by the ICC are utterly baseless in fact, and they're slander to the Jewish state. To the Biden administration, don't say outrageous. Say what I'm saying that the charges are not true. Israel is not starving people as a weapon of war. Israel is not intentionally targeting innocent civilians in an effort to defend the Jewish state. Those two things are lies, say so. And these charges were brought without consulting with the state of Israel. The ICC, in my opinion, is a rogue organization that's obliterated their charter under the Rome Statute that has their goal, the marginalization of the Jewish state. The ICJ, the International Court of Justice, a UN chartered organization, issued an injunction against the state of Israel regarding their military operations in Gaza. The head judge has nothing but disdain for the Jewish state. Here's what he said. Israel occupation of Gaza and the West Bank, unhappy birthday to you, 48 years of occupation. This is the head judge. The guy in charge of overseeing the case against Israel, in my view, has a long history of animosity toward the Jewish state. Him being a judge presiding over Israel is a joke. So I reject the ruling of the International Court of Justice. I reject the arrest warrants of the ICC. And I will do everything in my power to make sure the ICC is sanctioned by the Congress because we're next. I'm going to tell every member of the Senate and the House, if you don't stand up for the ICC now and push back hard, we're next. The same model they're using to come after Israel and the IDF they will use against us. So this is a defining moment for the Congress to stand up and push back against out of control organizations. I had my staff look at the number of resolutions condemning Israel versus the world at large. Do you have those numbers? Or is it? We'll get them to you in a second. Is it here, is it on my paper? I don't have any a lot. I'll get you the numbers. So the UN has had a bias against Israel for decades. And if you don't see it, you're blind. So from 2015 through 2022, the UN General Assembly adopted 140 resolutions against Israel, 68 against all other countries on the planet. If you listen to the UN, you would think that Israel is the worst actor on planet Earth. 140 resolutions condemning the state of Israel, 68 against all other countries, Iran, North Korea, on and on and on. So I am tired of this. I want to let the Israeli people know that I will push back against these organizations that Congress has your back. 
I'm urging the administration not only to provide you the weapons you need, do so in a timely manner. I appreciate the administration's pushback against the ICC, but we need more than words. We need action. I saw yesterday where the administration is uh, saying they will not support sanctions against the ICC. I hope you'll revisit that. The worst thing you can do in this business is talk tough and not follow it up with actions. So I leave this visit still hopeful that we can secure normalization. I had a discussion with the prime minister, with all the political leadership of this country, and the day after does matter. These battalions will be destroyed eventually. Then what happens next? I do not expect the state of Israel to reward an act of terrorism by declaring a Palestinian state. The worst thing that could happen to this region, the state of Israel, is for our terrorists to be rewarded for their actions. October the 7th cannot be seen as Liberation Day in the future. We got a state because we killed enough Jews to get one. That cannot be the outcome. The Knesset passed a resolution 99 to 9, rejecting the unilateral declaration of a Palestinian state. The countries of Ireland, Norway, and Spain have recognized a Palestinian state. What you've done is unbelievable. You have rewarded the largest act of terrorism against the Jewish people since the Holocaust. What's the boundaries of this Palestinian state you just recognized? Who's in charge of it? Is it a democracy? Do they still want to kill all the Jews? Really? Do you really want to reward this act of terrorism? I don't. I don't know how this movie ends, but I can tell you this. Of all the people I've talked to, the crown prince of Saudi Arabia has done more than talk. He's actually changed things. There's a report out today or yesterday about how the school system in Saudi Arabia has fundamentally changed. They no longer teach killing all the Jews. It's a report by an international body that acknowledges that the curriculum in Saudi Arabia now is not designed to create hatred toward the Jewish people in the state of Israel. 38% of the people working in Saudi Arabia today are women. The change is real. What am I looking for? The Palestinian Authority to change. The Palestinian Authority, as it is constructed today, is a terrorist organization. I will go back and introduce legislation to make them a terrorist organization under U.S. law until they change their policy. To this day, they pay people to kill Jews. If you kill a Jew, your family is better off than if you had a job. That needs to stop. So everybody talks about the PA. Well, the Palestinian Authority, as it constructed today, has yet to condemn the attack of October the 7th. We're supposed to... That's the answer? The Palestinian Authority, as I speak today, still pays martyr payments to people who killed innocent Jews. The Palestinian Authority is not the answer. It is the problem. Take any questions you got. Thank you very much uh, for your time. Yeah, Israel from Anchor Info News. Um, so, if you could tell us what you heard from the Prime Minister, uh, should the UN Security Council come up with a resolution and should the US not veto that resolution, would it well then stop its operation in Rafah altogether? I think uh, the administration and uh, the State of Israel and the administration have worked closely about military operations in Rafah. We all have the same goal, destroy Hamas. How do you create something new if Hamas is still around? It's non-negotiable to destroy the military capability of Hamas to attack the Jewish state again and to wreak havoc on the Palestinian people. Now, how we get there is being worked out, but that's non-negotiable. So um, from my point of view, the weapons necessary to do the job have been slow coming, and I would ask them to be sped up. This came today from the prime minister's office at some of the weapons are being slow walked. It should be the policy of the United States to ensure the destruction of Hamas sooner rather than later. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Right there. 
Yeah, the more do you. Um, you speak so positively about the normalization with uh, Saudi Arabia. Last week, uh, National Security Advisor Jack Sullivan was here, both here and in Riyadh. And when he left, it was published that he was uh, disappointed and frustrated with uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu that can't even give a vague statement regarding a possible Palestinian state. You have met with MBS many times. You said he's doing a lot of things. You support his move for normalization with Israel. Um, what do you advise Prime Minister Netanyahu? And do you think Israel might be losing an historic opportunity with the Saudi Arabia? When it comes to rewarding the attack against Israel, the Palestinian state, that's not a BB problem. That's an Israel problem. If you ask the body politic of Israel. How many of you are interested in creating a Palestinian state after October 7th? The numbers are incredibly low. So that's not the right question. The right question is, can Israel, working with the region, come up with a solution to the Palestinian problem that not only secures Israel in a permanent way, but ensures the enduring defeat of Hamas? That should be everybody's goal. So the idea of a word being the problem, it's not a word, we have to march forward. How can you recognize a state um, that still pays people to kill Jews? Who are you dealing with over there? Who are you going to negotiate with? Hamas is still in being. So what we're asking Israel to do is to recognize something that may wind up leading to another October the 7th. Nobody in Israel is going to sign up for a deal until they're assured that the people who follow over the arc of time are going to be different. When will you get a, a, an acceptance of some Palestinian entity by the Israeli people? When they stop teaching math, if you had 10 Jews, you kill six, how many would you have left? When they stop paying people to kill Jews, then you may have interest by the Israeli people of doing business. Why would you ask Israel to commit while Hamas is still standing and deal with the Palestinian Authority still giving money to kill Jews? That makes no sense. That's the wrong question. That means we are closing the door on, on the, an no. opportunity that might change our life and the future of the I, Here's what I think you need to understand. You don't have a partner to deal with yet. Can you one day? I hope so. But who would you do a deal with? Would you do a deal with a boss? Yeah, well, what are the reforms? Where are they? So what I'm suggesting is that we're asking Israel to do things that make no sense right now. I'll push Israel if I think we need to push Israel. I want to see change before I ask Israel to acknowledge something that could lead to another October 7th. What will be the security boundaries? Now, BB agreed in the last administration to a plan for a Palestinian state. It's not like you're incapable of dealing with your neighbors. Israel has engaged in diplomatic relations with six of your neighbors. Is Israel the problem? You've got peace agreements with six people, six countries surrounding you. So what I would suggest to the administration is that you need to make crystal clear to Israel that anything that follows the destruction of Hamas will lead to the security of the state of Israel. Can you get there? I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Can you be specific about which weapons are being thrown off? And then after that, how can you be based that you thought it would take another seven months before the Gaza war is really over? And I'm wondering how is that going to fit within the foreign event? Well, I, I think, number one, as to the weapons, they I won't share the list, but there's more than one group of weapons um, as to as to the timetable we're on. Um, sooner rather than later, American politics will kick in here eventually. President Trump has told me that he'd like to build on the Abraham Accords. I'm a Republican. I've been here five times trying to get an agreement on a Democratic president's watch, to your, to your point, I expect MBS to understand the security needs of Israel, but also expect the region, including the state of Israel, to articulate a future that brings about change. Are you saying now that the Saudi normalization deal is, could be done under a Trump presidency? 
I think it'd be very, I, I've said from the beginning, the best time to do it is now. Okay. Yeah. You need 67 votes. Okay. How do you get 67 votes? If Israel's for the deal, then I think most Republicans are going to vote for it. Then you're going to have to get enough Democrats to get to 67. I think the conditions that MBS are asking for is a lowering of the fighting, a reduction in fighting. MBS does not expect Israel to do a deal that doesn't include the destruction of the battalions. Nobody in Saudi Arabia has ever suggested to me that the deal would allow Hamas to be standing militarily. So I want to make that crystal clear. Nobody in Israel will ever agree to a deal that denies them the ability to destroy these battalions and any military capability in the future. I have found Saudi Arabia not to object to that. And here's what, here's what I would say. Why would Saudi Arabia invest a lot of money into new Palestine if Hamas and other terrorist groups are still around that will kill anybody that wants to work with Israel? It's in everybody's interest to destroy these terror networks. As long as these terror networks exist, Islamic Jihad, as long as you have people in the West Bank paying their own citizens to kill Jews, you're going nowhere. But the day that you see change there, I think you'll see change here. What is Israel looking for after October 7th? Security. Israel has a right to demand there'll never be another October 7th. Now, what Israel has to understand is that the day after Hamas is destroyed, you're going to have to work with the region to build up a new Palestine. I expect that. In terms of time, sooner rather than later. Yeah. Last weekend, um, members of the Israeli army were killed out of the Israeli homeland. And it seems to me that it was out of U.S. main brutality. Yeah. What is your reaction to it? And just a question, please, is do you think that Israel should be restricted somehow with using such weapons in such dense populated areas? Well, I think this attack killed two Hamas leaders and the loss of life in the tent area, Israel said, very regrettable. <coughs> Was there a weapons depot there? I don't know. Was there a secondary blast indicating that they may have been weapons surrounding the civilians? I do know this. I know that the humanitarian zones have been used by Hamas to launch attacks. So the weapons we are providing Israel are designed to give them the capability to destroy an enemy who would destroy them if they could. So what happened a couple of days ago is not going to change U.S. policy. The Biden administration said that. And it goes back to the point I was trying to make early on. I do not believe that the people of Israel through their military are trying to kill innocent Palestinians. I do not believe the people of Israel are trying to starve the people of Gaza as a military tool of war. I don't believe that because if you were trying to do that, you would be providing no food. You would have no battalion on the ground trying to provide water. So the bottom line is the accusations that are leveled against Israel are false. In military operations of close quarters, you expect things like this regrettably. Here's what I believe. If Hamas surrendered tomorrow, Israel would stop the war. If Israel withdrew from Gaza tomorrow, Hamas would still try to kill all the Jews. Thank you. Could one more? Yeah, one more. Um, so this was mentioned here. Uh, the National Security Advisor, Saqib Hanke, said the war would last another seven months. Well, I think whatever it takes to destroy the battalions and to destroy the military capability of Hamas is non-negotiable. Can you have a reduction in fighting that would lead to something that would lead that could provide a long-term solution? I don't think they're inconsistent. Again, I'm telling you, I've been to Saudi Arabia more than I've been here. Nobody in Saudi Arabia expect Israel 
to leave these battalions in place. Nobody in Saudi Arabia expect, expects Israel not to destroy Hamas. That's not the focus of discussions. It happens, what happens when Hamas is gone? That's what we need to be talking about. How do you do deal with the PA until it changes? You know, all this pressure about BB's the problem, this person's the problem. Right now, the Palestinian Authority has not condemned the attacks of October 7th. How hard would that be? That I'm a Muslim of great faith. It's not my faith on display here. We do not believe in raping women and putting children in ovens. How, how hard would that be? Not very hard. You're still making payments, martyr payments, through the government. The official payroll of the Palestinian Authority pays people who've been engaged in acts of terrorism. But is, is the Prime Minister confident that he's going to have the international backing to continue? I think he's confident he's going to destroy Hamas for the sake of the Jewish people. International backing of the Jewish state is not the issue. The issue is the survival of the Jewish state. He will do what he has to, and I don't think anybody disagrees. I met with Gantz. I don't think any political leader in this country expects to do anything short of destroying the military capability of Hamas. And I'm here to tell you, the Congress of the United States, and goes back to your question, we're going to be with Israel. Why? Because they'll come after us next. I don't think you'll ever have an enduring defeat of Hamas until you have a better life for the Palestinians. I don't think there'll ever be security in Israel until the Palestinians have something to live for versus die for. And who will take I don't think you'll ever have security in Israel until the terrorist groups who run um, Gaza are destroyed. I don't think you'll have security in Israel until the PA is changed. Uh, in terms of the Palestinians, you'll never have so you'll never have a hopeful life until you swear to stop wanting to kill all the Jews. It's all tied together. How hard is it to say we no longer teach the killing of the Jewish people? How hard is that? Is that hard? That shouldn't be hard. So if you're serious about changing things in Palestine, start within the country itself. So perhaps I'm trying to sorry for person, but it will have to be a revised Palestinian authority. It will have to be an entity that will not threaten the state of Israel, that can live in peace with Israel, rejects the destruction of the Jewish state, that has an alternative uh, to martyrdom for their young people. Why are we picking on Israel as a world? What would you do if somebody came into your country and did to your people what happened here in Israel? What is the appropriate response to groups who want to slaughter your family? I bring this up and nobody likes hearing it, but I know what my country did when we were attacked by the Japanese when we went to war with Japan and Germany, we did what was necessary to protect our way of life. Was it disproportionate to use atomic weapons to end a war we couldn't afford to lose? So this idea that international community, your question, considers Israel the problem, I reject that. These charges are false. They're blood libel against the Jewish people. It's not saying Israel is perfect. I'm not here to say that, nor are we perfect, but I'm here to say the world's upside down. I never thought I would live in a world where after you get attacked and 1,200 of you people get slaughtered, eight months later, you're going to jail. I do not believe the people of Israel want to kill everybody in Gaza. I don't believe they're starving the people of Gaza. I believe Hamas is making it hard for food to get in. And when it comes in, they steal it. And when Israel tells people you need to leave this area, they won't let them go. That's what I believe. And I want the administration to say what I am saying. I want them to be clear. It's not just outrageous that the ICC is coming after Israel. The charges are false and are a lie. That's what I want. I want clarity. I love Israel. I don't hate the Palestinian people. I love the state of Israel and what it stands for. I have no animosity.
toward the Arab world. I'm not here because of what I hate. I'm here because of what I love. And I believe this, that the people who are trying to destroy you want to come after me next. I believe that with all my heart and soul, that we are next. If we don't stop the ICC, they are coming after us. May I ask you something about the ICC? Yeah. Um, what are the options for, for Congress if uh, the White House has, uh, said last night that they oppose the... Uh, It'd be a mistake. It would be a mistake of monumental proportion. You would be showing weakness at a time you need to be strong. They will come after our soldiers next, just as sure as I'm standing here. The model used against Israel will eventually be used against American forces. They threaten to come after our troops in Afghanistan. So I'm hoping that Democrats and Republicans can put sanctions together that the president will approve. This is a defining moment for, for the American military. The American military needs to see Congress and this administration having their back. Because what is the IC threatening? They're threatening the elected leadership of a democratic nation with the most independent judiciary on the planet, and they're also uh, threatening your soldiers. They're coming after us next. So to the, to the Biden administration, if you don't send a clear signal now, you will regret it later. I believe there will be substantial bipartisan support to sanction the ICC. I believe a lot of Democrats and a lot of Republicans see this as about us, not just about Israel. That what we do today for Israel will determine our fate tomorrow. But Thank you. If the arrest warrants are issued, the sanctions go in. Right now, it's just a paper. But if, there, if the court acts on this arrest warrant, then the body needs to be sanctioned because it's a lawless body. Mm -hmm. The charges brought by the uh, uh, prosecutor or without foundation, and he brought the charges without consulting with Israel first. You're not starving people. You're not intentionally trying to kill innocent Palestinians uh, through the IDF. The IDF is not a war criminal organization. Israel is not Russia. The leaders of your country are not Hamas. The soldiers who wear your flag are not the SS. This is the biggest libel of the Jewish state since its founding. Thank you very much.